All of our pals from roughfish.com. If you're into fishing for weird species of fish, these are the guys to talk to. They've helped us with a lot of research over the years on all these different strange species that we fish for. So shout out to the rough fish boys. <laughs> oh, see, it, it's swimming up. Got him. Yeah? Yep. Got him. Look at the back more on the Mr. B's real cool rod right there. Ooh, that's a nice one. That's a keeper there, boys. Yep, I'm going to take pressure off. Oh, no. Nice. Welcome to Things Chris Does, where we're all professionals here. Well, welcome back to the channel. Another fishing adventure with Dad. <laughs> Heading up to northern Minnesota. Um, very sketchy roads. It's foggy. Very icy. And right before I was about to start filming the intro, we ran into a fresh accident this lady slid off the road and like rolled her car into the ditch and she was sitting upside down down like i don't know 12 15 foot drop ditch or whatever yeah so we were the first ones jumped out pried the door open pulled her out and i didn't feel like putting a camera in her face so i didn't even bother maybe if someone that knows her ever sees this subscribe to the channel that'd be cool but she was fine. She Everyone, was okay, luckily. Yep, she was okay. So About three miles up the road, there was another head-on with a semi. So we've been rerouted on a new road because it's solid ice. Yeah. And it was kind of a blessing that we came across her flipped upside down in the ditch because we didn't even know the roads were that bad. We were just cruising along like it was back home. 65, 70 miles an hour. And then we go to slow down to help her and we slid for 20 feet. Like, oh, okay. But anyway, we're headed to northern Minnesota to go for our annual burbot adventure. So we're going to go and slay some burbots, also known as eel pouts. Lawyer. Also known as linglings. Lingcod. Also known as lingcod, also known as poor man's lobster. But anyway, this is going to be a fun uh, me and dad trip. If we survive the roads there. Yeah. And hopefully we can head back before dark. Probably there's been three accidents in the last half hour on this one stretch of road. Yep. But I mean, it's for fishing, damn it. So you, right. guys, you guys better like this video. It must be done. We're risking it out here for this one. We're traveling even further away on shitty roads. <laughs> yep. Well, we're at the spot, but I can't show you where, otherwise Dad will get mad, so we'll see you in the fish house. In the Eskimo tent. Perfect day. It's like it's like 32 degrees. No wind. It's just probably don't have to turn the heater on for a while. It's nice. She is a murky one. All right. We're all set up. Got the Helix 7 on deck. 20 feet. And we're already marking fish. Jigs we're using. I rattle glow spoons. Probably my favorite walleye eel pout. I take the bad factory hooks that they come with and put on better trebles. Over oversized treble hooks. Yeah, that are sharper and last better. Mm -hmm. Because half the hooks that come with them you can't get uh, a decent hook set on. <clears throat> And we're out here with our Mr. B's real cool rods. Right on. Field test number two with these bad boys. It is field test number two. This time we're gonna go for some bigger fish. Oh yeah. Now's probably a good time to welcome a new member to the tech family. We have the GoPro Hero 11. Baby, brand freaking new. Haven't even used it yet. So now we can get some different angles and be a little more convenient so I don't gotta keep moving the camera around. So now we can do cool stuff like this, switching to that camera. Super view, pretty dope. Switching back to this camera. Isn't that so much fun? Hit it, you fuck. First fish? Yeah. There we are. Action of the Mr. B's real cool rod. 
Can you grab that? <laughs> yeah, that back one's killed. Hi, Mom. Hi. Um, Dad said that the guy is there for... Uh, in 10, in about 10, 15 in minutes. 10, 15 minutes, some guy will be there to let in for Coke or whatever. There we go. Coke or liquor? It's liquor. Liquor. All right, thank you. Thank you, babe. Yep. Love you. Love you too, bye. There's another one right there. Another one? Look at that. There we are. The first burbot. A lake leopard. Not as big as we're going to get out of here today, that's for sure. Should we let him go? We can let that one go. There you go, buddy. That's good. Pretty sure that was a male. Nice. First eel pout about 10 minutes in right now. And you got to see the backbone on the Mr. B's ultralight. Real cool rod. The gnarly noodle. And it seemed like if you came up from underneath them, they took off. But if you slowly lowered it down to them, they would hit it. Mm -hmm. Well, with more tech comes more responsibility. Just changed the battery in that one because that died. And then this one just died. So now we got to take care of that. Protein time. <laughs> got to have a snack to stay huge. We got some bacon and cheddar beef sticks. Oh my land. Uh, God, it has like bacon. Like even the greasy part of it. Like cold leftover bacon when it's in the fridge, you know? <laughs> you pick it out of the soggy, fat covered bag and you're like, <clears throat> America. No, because you were the whole time. Mm mm. Yeah. No, you were getting picked up better on the last one. No. Yeah, you were. Oh, you got a fish on you. Oh. Coming up to mine. Cut back to yours. Right on it. Come on. Um, down to the bottom it went. I'm going to sit right on the mud line again. Because they keep just coming out of hiding. See, look at that. Oh, I feel it. Got them. Yeah? Yep. Where's, hang on. They're both on. They're recording. Let me try to get like one like up close to the... Look at the back more on the Mr. B's real cool rod right there. Yeah, that's a nice one. That's a keeper there, boys. Oh, oh. I got the rod. Okay. Oh, look at money shot. They're definitely right in full spawn. <laughs> yeah. Oh, beautiful. There we are. You look out number two. I'll go grab the an angle up there. We got some uh, baby juice coming out. Here. That was GoPro. a full one. GoPro, stop recording. Is that you? No, oh, that's a fish. Still rising or is it hanging there? It's rising still. No, no, it's hanging. Number three, coming up. Is that the camera's not? This camera's dead, so it's not batteries, but I can, you can see, still see how the rod is flexing. Oh yeah. Look at that. Up to the backbone. Oh, nice eater too. Nice. That's the one wow. yet. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you got one coming up. You did? Yeah. Oh, God, I can't even get to the camera. Let's <laughs> see, okay. Yeah. Oh, got him. Got him. Look at that. That's four. Kind of big, kind of boom. <clears throat> four linglings. Big bada boom. I hope we can catch some of the action of this rod. It's like a freaking big boom. I'm going to have to tighten drag up. A little bit. Not, not too much. Okay. That's a big ling. That's a big ling ling. Oh. This one. This might be the biggest one yet. A double? No, I think you might have hooked my line. Oh. Yeah, I think you did. You did? Yeah. Oh. That is the biggest one yet. Or oh, tie around them. What the heck? Look at that. Yeah. To look at it. Hold on a second. It's, it's still fighting. Yeah, it's me. Yeah, I'm going to set the hook. Oh, yeah, there you go. What the hell is it wrapped on? It's just wrapped around the fish. Because I like looked it on the outside of its mouth. It didn't even go in there. Okay, see if I can. I don't, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take pressure off. Because I don't wanna. <gasps> oh! No! Nice! <laughs> well, 
Number four uh, survived. Guess we're not keeping number four. Tommy boy, what'd you do? I don't know. The fish did it. <laughs> I got the fish. Whatever this is is big. Ah, why did I drop it down the hole? Well, you got it on film. Yeah, I know. But you were dropping it down the hole. Yeah, that too. Welcome to Things Chris Does, where we're all professionals here. Dang it. Well, we have two in the bag. So the first one we caught was small, so we let it go. We knew we were going to get bigger ones tonight. Towards the end of the night. Um, so Ouch. we have two in the bag. Or there's one in the bag, one right here. And then just lost the fourth one because I dropped it back down the hole. So yay me. Okay, we're back in the truck, all loaded up. And now we're going to trek on back home. We wanted to kind of leave before dark to get out of this little valley before it gets uh, really dark because the roads are just shit and it's going to be back that all the way home. So It'd be nice to get back to at least Grand Rapids before it gets dark dark. Yeah, so we're trekking back home and we will see you there for the catch and cook. We're back at the headquarters and my boys are at home but my sister's little daughter Lucy gets to see the burbits. What is it? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> it's a burbot. Yeah. Okay, first step to cleaning burbot is a beer, but unfortunately it's cheerleader beer. All of our pals from roughfish.com. If you're into fishing for weird species of fish, these are the guys to talk to. They've helped us with a lot of research over the years on these, all these different strange species that we fish for. So shout out to the rough fish boys. <laughs> this is somebody's favorite fish. Yeah. 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 What kind of fish is that? Burbit. It is a burbit. Good job, Lou. It's a burbit. Can you pet it, huh? Now you want to pet him? It's almost like bullhead feelers. It's his goatee. And they actually, if you see it, they have like flared nostrils, kind of like a catfish, because they hunt mostly by smell. A couple other interesting facts about burbits. They can live up to 15 years old or more. Um, the livers make up 10% of their entire body weight. It's because um, it's super high in vitamins. Actually, bourbon is the only freshwater member of the cod family that lives in freshwater. And Siberia, like the shamanic cults and stuff, used to believe it was a link to the underworld. And uh, that eating them was taboo. You weren't supposed to do that. <laughs> but what they found out now that they've actually got more uh, vitamins and omegas and stuff than salmon do. So not only is it are they really good to eat? They taste like lobster, which we'll show you guys. It's a superfood. They are, but they're like super good for you. <laughs> okay, so the clean one, you take the fins like this, like most fish, fold it forward. You're gonna make an incision. Is there enough light? There's enough light. Okay. All the way around the body. The only thing with these you want to do is make sure you, you don't cut into the stomach cavity, and I don't really know why that is. And then, kind of like cleaning catfish or bullheads. Oh, this pliers isn't going to work. Yeah, they will. You get a good grip on their head. Just give them a pull. Easy as that. There's Just all like that. So no. that just shows how strong the, the skin the is. The skin is incredibly strong. A little deep on the front here, but that's the liver. I think it's massive. And apparently it's full of vitamins and stuff. Hmm. I'm not going to find out because it looks disgusting. Then, you find the spine. Make an incision just like that. Right along the backbone. Yep, on both sides. So once you've cut down once you got the back strap, a lot of people just take that back strap and call it a day. I don't like wasting anything. So the back of the fish is right here. Once you come past that rib cage, it's like any other fish that you flay out. Take the whole slab right there. Yep. That probably some of the best meat right there. Yeah. So you take the back strap and the tail section, and you just repeat it on the other side. 
And that is how you clean a needle pellet. Burbit, Warrior, Ling, Loda Loda, Mariah, Freshwater Cod, whatever they want to call it. Well, that's one. Terrific. <laughs> the 2023 Burbits. 2023 Burbits. Traps. Man, I wonder if they 3D print their skin. Looks pretty gridded. I don't know. Government's up to something. Now we're in the kitchen. Right on. So basically what we did is we took all of our fillets, put them in a tub of water, let them soak overnight. You know, I don't, you don't have to, I just usually do. It gets a lot of the blood and stuff out of the fillets. So once you got your fillets, I always check them for bones. There shouldn't be any. This is part of the back strap. And for eel pout, we just like to cube them up. You can throw a whole fillet in there. I just worry about stuff not being cooked all the way. So I'm kind of picky about that kind of thing. This is the tail section. If you look at this, just about every fish has one. That's where the Y bone is. To get that out, if you don't want any fish in your fillets at all, it's like I said, if I find a fish or a bone in somebody's fish, I'm done. So you take your knife and you run it along both sides of that strip. Yeah, there's a bone there. You can hear it crunch. Peel that out of there. That's all bone anyway. And now, except for northerns, they have all kinds of Y bones, which is why I don't eat them. Somebody showed me how to do it, and I didn't really care to learn. <laughs> so yeah, no, so no, that's all boneless fish. They do the same thing with walleyes, crappies. Some people say they burn up. I just don't trust it. Cube them. Butter, garlic salt. Oh, yeah. The necessity. Because Mick Golden's always there for me. <laughs> All right, so once you got your water boiling, this is going to be cold, so it'll stop the boil, but just throw a bunch of it in there, bring it back to a boil, and once it starts boiling good, you want to boil it for about six to eight minutes or until it starts floating around. The bigger the chunks, the longer it's going to have to boil, but that's why I like to cube it to make sure it's cooked thoroughly. All right. There you go. That's what I was talking about. It's turning nice and white. And when it starts floating and rolling up on a hard boil, then you know you're done. Oh my God. That is so good. That's some freshwater cod. Mm-hmm. You know, it just, what's funny though is, is that the uh, shamanic cults and stuff that, you know, used to say that eating burbot was, or eel pot was forbidden because it's like a link to the underworld. Yeah, forbidden link to the underworld. I don't believe that. <laughs> you know, what's funny is the, Shamanic cults and stuff used to say that, you know, burbot was forbidden to eat and it's all linked to the underworld. <laughs> yeah, and on that note, uh, we're going to end the video there. Get to enjoy our burbot now and we'll friggin' see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Remember, life is short, so get out and do all the things. <laughs> all right.